Ladies and gentlemen, this is the RK Tokens Podcast. We are the RK Tokens. I am the anomaly, Will Farrow. Yo, Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. Yeah. And I am Patrick Cloud. Yeah. And we're always happy to have the tech god, aka the dice god, aka Kadeem, aka the keeper of games, aka Zordon. We've never done this before. Uh, <laughs> literally, that just came out of nowhere. Yes, yes, indeed. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the RK Tokens podcast. The RK Tokens podcast is back in the best version it could possibly be in. So glad to be here with my brethren here. And we are, um, we, we, we just, we got to get in it, man. We got to get in it. We uh, talked about what's coming out, PlayStation, Xbox. We talked about that on the last episode, man. But, you know, I've always had this thought about a lot of things that have been left behind game-wise, franchise-wise that I feel like, man, may, you know, like still with these new consoles going out, it's just like, yo, like maybe these things will come back. Maybe this stuff can happen. And then just games that I feel like just were left under the table, under the rug, just people just slept on. So I feel like that's what we need to get into today. And okay. so that's what we need to get into with level one. Level one. Doop, doop. One. Yes, level one, most underrated video game and video game console. This is a big wow. one. This is a big one. So you have All right, to- Will, wait, which, which one do you want to hear from first? Underrated game or console? I would like game and okay. then console, because console, I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a dispute between all of us. Yeah. OK, I'll go first. Um, I feel like one of the most underrated games was for what I would actually also choose for one of um, the most underrated console, the Sega Dreamcast. This was Sonic Adventure. Um, And I'm really just talking about the entire series, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't keep going with this. They completely went somewhere left with Sonic right after this. I think he went to the PlayStation after this, actually. but um, yeah, this was a this was a big game. This was dope. Uh, me and my my brother played this all the time. Uh, just what they did with Sonic was perfect. You know what I mean? Like he was, you know, he was obviously he came out with such a unique look with the two D, you know, side scroller. Um, uh, you know, he kind of just changed platforming, uh, and he was such a strong character. But then, you know, obviously Mario started doing a whole bunch of different stuff. So, you know, Sonic started doing a whole bunch of different stuff. Didn't really work, uh, but it, they just got it right with Sonic Adventure. And they mm-hmm. it, it, this was a game that you could play the entire cast of Sonic, uh, even even people you didn't really even know like that, like uh, like Amy. Big the Cat or yeah. <clears throat> or Amy, you know, you didn't you, you saw her, but you didn't really know uh, a lot about her until this game. And then uh, you know the robot. I you know I forget his name, but yeah, Knuckles. You could play as uh, uh, Tails. You could really play as uh, the whole cast. And then you know they they even added Shadow at the uh, on the second one. So and just what they did with just like how big they made it, and they just made him like they just made Sonic exactly how Mario made Mario in Super Mario sixty four. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that transfer that we saw and we were just like, oh my God, this is a masterpiece. This is like, they just got it right with this. And just like how they had, you know, the the first level of Sonic Adventure, you're sort of running and doing these huge jumps in this sort of paradise looking level. And there's huge orca whales sort of like jumping around. And uh, the the way they implemented like grinding, you know, you can jump on a like a a rail that sort of goes through the entire city. Yeah, and then every every character had a different game gameplay style. Uh, they even had little mini games like you could raise these little chow. I, I don't know if you pronounced it cow or chow. I wasn't sure, but you know you could raise one to be evil, and then they go to like they get like horns, and then the the, the good ones get like a halo, and they it, it was just like really it was really as uh, it was a massive game, and. Yeah. I just remember putting so many hours into it. And I just, I was just so sad when the next game, you know, he had a sword and then 
then there was a game that it was just like Sonic couldn't start stop running or he'd die like he was Jason Statham or something. It was just like it was there was it, it was so weird to see Sega get it completely right and then sort of just like drop the ball completely like it. nobody's business. Yeah, bro. It was right. uh, you know me, I'm I'm a I, I grew up on Sonic. Like I said, Sonic is my Mario. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. Like, you know, throwing that into there. It just like you gave the perfect like analogy to it. It was just like, yo, if you had to describe it in anything, it was Mario 64. And it was just like, yo, to see them do that, mm -hmm. it was so cool. But then to like see them do exactly what Sega normally does was just like, oh man, come on. Too like, far treatment. Yeah, it was just, but it was just like if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like even when they had like Mario Pinball, I mean Sonic Pinball, and I was just like, okay, okay, I, I get it. You know, trying to do what you what you can with Sonic, but it's just yeah, man. It it, it was these two though, flawless. I'm trying to yeah. remember if Sonic Adventure Two was the one that had like the follow me, set me free. Dun, 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 yeah, another city. city. Yeah. yeah, is that make it through? Follow. The, Sonic was known for having like super dramatic singer singers. Yeah, like even Sonic Racing was like this girl who was singing her heart out, just like it was just for all like the like record. it was all on the line. Oh my <laughs> god! Like, <laughs> and it just got so intense, which was interesting because a lot of video games don't be having like lyrical songs. Just yeah. right there, unless it's like Def Jam Vendetta, but right. it, for some reason it worked. It and did. It was, it was such dope. a beautiful game too. And the storyline, like Sonic always had a good premise, right? But this was the first time we really saw like a good like story arc, you know? Yeah. Like the other games were just like a, a compilation of really well put together levels. And then he got the, you know, he got Eggman. But this was the first time we sort of saw Sonic like in a full on almost cinematic universe so yeah. i think that's why this was so it was like the best utilization of a good character um yeah. that we didn't really get to see be a good character <laughs> unfortunately yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. well i think it's time to start the campaign pat i think it's time to start the campaign for bring the storyline and the characters bring back the director the producer the writer the, whoever was in charge of the music department bring them all back to the table i was like hey we need sonic adventure 3 Hashtag save Sonic. Hashtag yes. Sonic. Hashtag save Sonic. And save let us, Sonic. Let Please. us help run the stuff. Cause uh I got some dope ideas for Sonic's kicks that mm. we could partner with Adidas on. That fly. Okay. Uh, so fly. Memories. Yeah. I don't know if any of you guys remember the music because uh, clearly, Will, I'm sure you knew how fucking clearly, Will, I know you know how like uh anxious the music gets in yes. sonic like when you get underwater but yeah. in dreamcast like when you're in the water it's it, it just hit different them strings like you're just like it feels oh, yeah. like you're actually drowning and i that's almost like a horror game yeah, bro. <laughs> you know like, you're holding your breath as you're playing Bro, like finding a bubble was like salvation you were just like oh my god like sometimes you would have to pause it like Sorry. So, so there Yo, is you've been like, breathing this whole time. So I mean, of course, I'm not sure. You just bring up horror games and Sonic. So there is this whole community that I'm not, I'm not sure if y'all got you guys heard of what creep what creepy pasta is. Yes. I've heard of it okay, you've heard of creepypasta. So yeah. of course it's a group of you know guys that just like horror films or guys and girls that just love horror things. So they have they they made this kind of Sonic and Mario like EXE. And it's a it's a it's a video game in a sense, but they horrify the hell out of Sonic. Or horrified the hell out of Mario. It exists. It's some scary ass games that literally you're running from Sonic. I think you're Tails, and you're running from Sonic. What? It's set up like in a, in a Sonic the Hedgehog two level, regular level. What is this called? Sonic EXE. Sonic No, 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 no. Pat, don't look it up. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Kadeem, yes, pull sir. it up and let's do a token reacts on it. Right now. Okay. No, 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 not right no, now. No, no. Okay. Find, we'll like, find it and then let's do a tokens reaction. All right, okay. we're, I guess we're going to ruin Sonic for ourselves. But yeah. yes, that is, the, uh, that is my underrated game. What about you guys? Um, I, I think I'm going to, uh, the underrated game that I think of, like, even like how you said Sonic um, was kind of in the espionage realm. And mine was Scython Filter. Ooh, come on. Throw back. Okay. Python 
Oh my God. Like, okay, outside of, let, let's just get it out there. Outside of the boxy kind of shapes that they were. It was PlayStation. It was you can't PlayStation. Go back, you can't go back expecting good graphics. Nah. Right. But this storyline for Scython Filter was so dope because one, it, it didn't feel like any kind of like James Bond, like Rainbow Six type of stuff. Like you felt, this was like one of the only games that I felt like I was a spy. I am here. I have to, I have to creep. I have to make sure I do this. I got the silence. Every this showed me the importance of a silencer to this day. Uh. Python filter, like let me know, like silence is golden. Cause there wasn't nothing like taking somebody out with the silent pistol when you got it. Man. It was just, and then they came out with Scython Filter 2. I'll never forget, like, the first stage, you're on a train, and you have to fight on top of the train. And you ca and you got to, like, be able to make sure you remember when to drop down, when they're going under the tunnels and stuff like that. This game was just, like, I feel like because there were so many of them coming out that people just, like, really slept on it. Like, first of all, shout out to 989 Studios. Facts. Um, 989 Studios like really brought the hits. Like yeah. folks really don't understand that. And I think that was like another place that was kind of slept on. Like they're the one that like made Twisted Metal, uh, Cool Borders, Jet Moto, um, Extreme, Three Extreme. They made Game Breakers and Game Day. Like all of, they were like Extreme. EA before EA could really like, like when EA was still trying to do stuff. Low key, low key. I, I, I believe the guy's name was Logan. Yeah, Gabriel remember Logan. Me correct. Gabriel Logan, and there were no toys of him. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember being Damn. that much of a fan, but there was no like they didn't really drop anything. I don't know if how 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 well it did um, uh, like sales wise, and I'm I'm pretty sure that has to do with how he ran. I remember he always like ran funny, yeah, uh, yeah. but I, I always thought it was fun. But one thing that I really liked about that uh, game, besides everything that Will said, was the gun choice, like. Yes. It had like a really extensive like like gun like really cool guns too yeah. and the even though the shooting mechanic was nothing compared to it is now like the same way that you'd go back and and play like an original mario game or something on the super nintendo uh i i remember we played it recently and i actually i appreciated the game mechanics it was a little clunky obviously it's playstation one but it was just dope how how it's how it's set up and it was almost kind of of a scary game too which i yeah. liked about it a lot oh yeah I didn't get a chance to jump into, I didn't know there was a part two, holy hell. I didn't get a chance to jump into Siphon Filter, but I do know that it is one of those critically acclaimed games that people genuinely loved. But to, say, to get the greatest hits, it got the greatest hits green slash with it. So man, you remember going to the store and getting that, man? They had a three. Wait, it went mean, all the way up to three? I got yeah. for the three. No, they made it three. I did three not play the three. Yeah, three was okay. Three was, um, it still yeah. got the greatest hits too. Yeah, it all, did, yeah it did. all the way through. Yeah, yeah, all the way through. And I think they even like remade it in like 07. I think they tried to bring there, it back. There is another Ooh. Siphon Filter on this list. I'm That'd be a fantastic about. PlayStation 5 revival though. Right. Damn, just, you imagine them saying. dropping that back? Yes. Just saying. Yes. Siphon Filter coming back for PS5. Ooh. That's That'd a be good. hard. That'd, That'd be hard. hard. We live in the time where that we're old enough to go buy our own video games. We can download them whenever we want, right? Right. During this time, what was the marketing like? Like, you got to imagine being the production companies or the video game studios. Like, all right, here's our release date. What are we going to do to get the, the audience and, and the consumers excited for these video games? Bro, what was it like in the 90s to drop a two disc? Like, one of these was two discs, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Siphon Filter 3, I think. That no, was two. Cool. I think two, two was the, two I thought I saw two discs. I thought I saw two discs logo. I could be wrong, but it's just a hell of a time to be alive, I guess, during that time. To be an adult that, then. They treated it like movies. That's why. So like when these came on, I'll never forget PlayStation commercials because that's what they did very well. PlayStation made either stuff seem like movies or events that were about to happen. And then you'd be like, yo, like, they like I remember they'll, yeah, they'll shoot like real people doing stuff. And then all of a sudden here comes the gameplay. And you're like, wait a minute, what is this? Right, right, and right. Like, I remember that. They did that with, uh, oh, did they do that with Twisted Metal? They did do that with Twisted Metal. Metal had some live action. Because I thought Sweet Tooth was real at one point. Because they, they actually had the dude with the head, having the head and it was on flame. They did do that. Yeah. That was cool. That was very cool. Yeah. So they, like, it was epic. Like, and then, like, that's what kind of made them, like, have to do the mature thing and, like, all the different ratings just because of what PlayStation was doing. 
Whoa, what is that? That was Scython filter. <laughs> what is that? That that is the next one. That's the next one in the series, Pat. That's that's the Omega strain. I fell off. This is our Tokyo Drift for Scython filter. <laughs> no, uh, I want to give on. it a chance. Let's quarantine and stream it. Hold we on. Have Hold on, hold, hold on. Before before we're out of here, before we get off Cyclone Filter, I just want to go ahead and do one more for you. One, and one it was second. online, so this was an online playable type of game where what you can go team for team. Mm -hmm. Is that is that stuff? stamp mean? Oh, there you go. <laughs> they lost the green. That's not Gabe Logan though. Nah, this is this is like a uh uh, it's the sh stuff within. Like what do they call those? Like it's a story within the story of Cyclone Filter. Uh, this was the PSP game of the year. Oh, wait, but wait, hold on, guys. We yes, P? That's Why what that says. Kadeem, yeah. Kadeem, stop bringing up the rest of the. I know wait, it kept going. On, guys. Wait a minute. We, we got we got one more. Like, I guess the game sold more than I thought. Yeah, oh, they, they kept going. They kept, oh, they kept going. going. So it's not underrated then. It's a heavy hit. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I wouldn't say where that. he I wouldn't started say that. Omega Strand and up, that we don't count that. We don't count that. Have you played those? I played Omega Strand and uh, I regret playing Omega Strand. Huh. Not on. just just if you're a Scython filter fan, you just kind of because because again, it's just kind of like ah, because it gets remade and so it's up to date, and you're just like, there's there so go. yeah, this, and then uh, it gets so bad. Yeah, Scython oh, so that looks like it's on some Metal Gear type of yeah, and no, no, like it became on like some Tom Clancy type of stuff, like that's like what it started turning into. So they went mobile though. They they started dropping games for the PSP, and, and when they were that the good, downfall. they ported it over to the PS2. Yeah. Ah, they tested. Uh huh. Yeah. That's so again, so, so, I want to yeah. play these. Like, <laughs> they're not they're not bad. It's just again like what you would want for it to be remade into. It just doesn't hold up to it. Like you know, like again, we we played like one, two, and well, you know, you didn't get a chance to play three. And you saw how fun that was. And then like, you see like, oh shit, they coming back. Oh, I mean, oh, they coming back out with it. And it's like, oh, this is what they did. Yep. They made, they made, they made five games. I mean, it's not a bad look. Dude, Stop, okay. I want to play. Leo, what is your choice? Siphon Filter get, needs to have a reboot. We know it's coming eventually. Uh, I would like to jump into a video game that came out for the PlayStation 1. Uh, I probably attempted to play it maybe two or three times, but I watched my brother play the hell out of this game, and that made me appreciate it so much more because the overall battle system, the mechanics to the game, it was made by Squaresoft, the same company that would make some of the, well, not some, all of the oh. Final Fantasy games, which is now Square Enix. Yep. Um, game is called Vagrant Story. Man. All right. Uh, I wish we had gameplay footage to kind of show you guys how it was. But it was. Uh, I know how this was. Oh, I remember this game. Oh wow, really? Oh, I, I remember I the your story. Is, is uh, the there's no shops? Marvel vs. Capcom. One more time. Is that the girl from Marvel vs. Capcom? That no, is that's not. not Morgan. That's not Morgan. That's not Morgan. No. Uh, so it's this. It's the game where you had to you had to modify your own weapons. Uh, let's see what else. it says. There's no shops, no player interaction with other characters. And so the game focuses on weapon creation, modification, as well as elements of puzzle solving and strategy. Yep. So think, um, what's a, what's a very great puzzle type of game? Like, okay. With when we play legend of Zelda, right. You know how the, the, the environment becomes the puzzle where you got to yeah. move a gear here, a shift here. Right. There was things like that, but like the puzzle playing was more chess kind of based where you had to go at this, you had to hit this square and leave a leave an item here it'd all be on the same screen that was really cool about this game the battle system was great i do not remember what the boss was okay. but i just remember you could even, you could pick between playing as a girl or a guy right no i mean from i made it pretty far in this game and as far as i made it you fight you fight a minotaur you fight uh dragons you fight it's really on some fantasy type fight and fighting style um a lot of a lot of knights a lot of swords a lot of skeletons it's 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 a really dungeon dwelling game, and it puts you in the spot where you're by your goddamn self, like you are by yourself, and it is a it, it like I said, it puts you in the, in that sense of uh, just I wouldn't say hopelessness, but you're just stuck in the damn place by yourself trying to fight all these damn all these enemies. There's there's even a, there's like a headless horseman that you gotta fight that that used to kick my ass all the time until I finally I remember that. Are it's, these like brother and sister? Are they like together? Like, what's... like I think I I know in the beginning of this game. Actually, I, do you want me to give you a quick spoil of what happens? Yeah, 
Okay, cool. Beginning of the game, um, you started up. Uh, this the guy on the left. I believe his name is Ashley. Even though he, I mean, he is that it? Like, it's huh? Ashley. Uh, yeah. Ashley this Wright. The only thing I didn't like about the game. Yeah. How it looked. <laughs> I don't know why his pants are like that. Oh, that's the dude. That's, that's the, the back dude. of his outfit. Yeah, that's the dude. That's the well, dude. This game is automatically a no. Who did <laughs> that? Who yeah. thought that would be a good idea? Bro, Let's look was, at it again. It was it was an old school game, bro. The graphics were not great. I'm not gonna say that, but wow. I will sh I will show you gameplay of it. Hold on, let me let me. I got gameplay queued up. Yeah, this was this this is why I, I remember imagine the game. assless chaps. Yeah, this is what I remember. So are we gonna see are we gonna see the gameplay. So like I said, so you choose an arm, but you want to attack. Boom. And and you literally just it's it's kind of it's kind of action based or kind of turn based in a sense, but you can actually. I wonder if you're gonna pull off pull off some combos. And if you see, you see your, what your body is doing at the same time. So your body has health as well on certain parts of your body. I've never that, seen that before. That's yeah, wild. that's that's what's what made this dope. But the assless chaps though. Yeah, the assless chaps are, are are terrible. But I don't know why. Boom. This looks, this it looks shows that. Crazy. So crazy battle system. This wasn't turn based like how we had with Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII, where you had yourself on one side. The, the enemies on the other side and you just choose what you want to do like the fact that you could run around the level run around the map and try to get a better angle on somebody to aim at a different part of their body i love it's that really aspect. just like you being faster with the with the controls than them um essentially there's that and there's i mean he's not doing it right but if you hit uh like a square like you set up your your combos so you can literally hit um uh if you hit square or circle you can actually do two hits or yeah, he must be like combo. first starting out because exactly. like, yeah, okay, again, he's, he's in the beginning of the game, so I don't think he has any of that set yet. But you can literally do combos, and then you can actually there's like a mid thing where you can actually heal yourself in the middle of a combo and keep going. Like yeah, you get poison, remember, uh, if you get poison, like, you can do anti venom and then keep fighting. Like it's crazy if you get it set up like that. Yeah, because yeah. I remember like fighting what it was like the the, the crimson something like and, and like the big guys like if you aim for their legs so like if it was a combo like if you went for the body and then hit their legs they were easily defeated because that's yeah. where they weak points were. Yeah, so it's it's one of a, my favorites, man. It's a great game. Uh, oh look, he just actually got in a trap. It was a hill panel, so he lucked out. There's there's traps set up on the ground that you end up just get just running across and end up being like it can they can just kill you. That's crazy. Game look boof. <laughs> you gonna tell me it looks boof compared to like the graphics aren't great, but so sci fi filter isn't great. Assless chaps. The Assless. Is a different version of like a puzzle solving action based game. And like coming from Squaresoft, realizing how many games we, me and my brother, ended up purchasing from this company. Yep. Seven, eight, nine, Legend of Dragoon, Vagrant Story. What's another one getting from that set? That uh, same no, uh, there's uh, Threads, of, Threads of Fate. Play the hell out of Threads of Fate. Threads of Fate. Oh, wow. What the hell out of Threads this of Fate? all Square Enix? All, all Square Soft games. All of them. Square, Square Soft. Soft. They, they did nothing but RPGs? For, for a long time, that's what it felt. I think they only did nothing but RPGs. They did they did Chocobo Racing. Oh, Good yeah. Thing oh, I remember oh, Threads of Fate. <laughs> <laughs> They did Chickaroo Racing for you. Well, you Don't forget Chocobo Racing. You want, some, you want some Chickaroo Racing? Oh, the Chickaroos got a whole game for racing? For racing Standing bro. at 14 sales. <laughs> right? At a strong 14. Oh, Yo, uh, threads of fate. Oh, uh, my God. Uh, front Mission. Front Mission was another one that was like a uh, turn-based like uh, robot. Yeah. Never heard of that. Again, yeah. though, assless chaps. Like they, they took his they took his ass cheeks out of his. <laughs> That's weird. I don't, the weird like, I don't, design I don't see how we make this. Like I hope, I hope like I like the concept of running around with this stuff, but just it was the Renaissance period, bro. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't. Are they doing that? I don't recall the Renaissance period doing that. It's like, a fantasy Renaissance period. That's cool fantasy. It's, we it's just did a whole weather. Drunkies and Dragons for a month straight. Yeah, there was I, a cockerang. My there characters had a dildo sword. Pat gave back shots to the biggest ogre in the land. My Come character on. had full pants on though. Full right. pants. None of, us, none of us had our ass cheeks out. Not my fantasy. Not my fantasy. <laughs> Not my that shit sound, it, it sounds cold, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> well, there's my underrated game. I hope if they do bring it back, they figure out how to make him not assless. That'd be great. Put him some regular regular pants on. That'd be. Well, he's not assless. Mm -hmm. His or jeans his were assless. Pants. Yeah, his jeans are like. <laughs> yeah. uh, his ass is out. He was. It was poking. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he had there. that PlayStation poke that every PlayStation character had. So but, there's the uh, game I would love to for us to get transitioned into uh, uh, most underrated console. Um, I'll start from I'll start with it. I think the most underrated console of all time in video gaming history. Ugh. Is this maybe the GameCube? That's that's, that's nice. That's, that's a, a good one. choice. I think it's the GameCube, guys. Across the board, we can go look at the Dreamcast and what it meant. We can go look at the Sega Genesis and what that meant. Sega CD, we don't even talk about. Whatever. Game Gear and Sega CD, they can go in the same pile to me. But Nintendo, solid lineup. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64. GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Switch, PlayStation, all the way PS1 to PS, hopefully five coming very soon. The Xbox, we started with that big ass. <laughs> it's so big. It's so big. The Xbox? The first Xbox is so big. It's also ridiculous. underrated though. Not even right. going to lie. The Xbox One, kind of a beast. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I want to say it's the system. I want to say the operating system that they put inside the Xbox. Like, I can't flex. We talked a lot of crap about it, but being able to play your own music while listening on video game, we didn't have no console like that. That's some PC level shit. And we were doing it on a video game console. But don't even lie. Look at it. It's kind of it's kind of hard, though. What? <laughs> the GameCube. The GameCube. It's hard, bro. And their rollout with uh, McDonald's. That yeah. was the best. That was low key the best video game rollout I've ever seen or ex got a chance to experience in my life. Yeah. I go lie. I feel like that. That's what ruined it. I feel like it going to McDonald's is what ruined it. Why? Like, I don't. I don't know. Like for some reason, for me, I was just like, it did. It looked like a toy. Like that's what I think the thing was too. And but like, you didn't even have to. You didn't even get to see it in McDonald's. Yeah, you did. No, that shit was in the. It, it was basically like that remember those big pipes tucked in that big yeah. And then and then they had the TV with the little controllers out. I mean, at least in LA, like they weren't about to let us touch the machine. It was oh, no, no no no. I don't mean like touch. But you can still like physically see it though. I don't remember. Oh yeah, for us, they it, had was, like, for it was for us. It was like, controller thing right there. It was a seat controller. A, a piece of protective thing and then the screen. That's all we really saw. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, a big yeah. Nintendo logo minutes. in the middle. See, and we then it, that shit restarted after you beat the first level because okay. so that you wouldn't stay there all day. You'd buy something and leave. Oh yeah, yeah. see, we didn't have a seat. Ours was like the stands like they used to have in GameStop. Like it was just a stand, the two controllers came out and then it was like a little dome that had the cube sitting in there and it was connected to the TV. But it still did the whole like you play it and then it restart to the next thing, like you said, so you couldn't like stay there all Yeah, day. that's the same thing. That's the same thing. I don't know, man, like, I, like it just like this was for some reason, I just, it just looked like a toy. And then like, that was it too. Like with PlayStation and Xbox, it was just kind of like, gonna go check out even though this shit is big i didn't check out xbox one i was on uh, xbox Stitch. one was dope though i almost picked that today xbox one was the design like yo that was such a just like boom branding we're here a big black video game console with the fucking x embroised embroidered up out of it in the big green circle that shit was hard bro. honestly you could say the same thing about gamecube it was literally like gamecube Purple, a, a color that we haven't seen since the accents of Super Nintendo, which was like a callback. Basically, a, a perfect cube with little mini bite-sized CDs and, yep. a, and a controller that people are still using today. Like, that's a solid choice. <laughs> I, I, my thing, too, is that, that helped with the piracy thing, too. Like, those mini discs. You know what I mean? You're not burning, yeah. you're not burning a mini, mini CD and putting it in there. Right. That's true. Nintendo was always good about that. Though. Yeah, like yeah. piracy, like you're, that's not happening. Like I like you they they've hacked the GameCube now, obviously, through other ways and methods, but for the most part, no one's walking around buying mini CDs and burning them. And that and I think that too was a lot of turn off for a lot of consumers. Um, uh, because that was one of the reasons why, like my homeboy who was like a big Nintendo head kind of didn't get his because the CDs were small. And so they were so either easy to lose or break that mm -hmm. most people didn't want to have to deal with that. And so they were just like, no, nah, like give me, like I got PlayStation and Xbox with regular CDs. So that did like, for myself, I know that did turn me off a lot. 
Because I was just like, when they had like Smash Bros. Melee, I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And it was I just- I liked it. And yeah, see, for some people, they loved it. Like for me, I was just like, you know me, I'm, I'm a giant. So that, that just didn't work for me. I just don't get design wise, the back. I don't understand why that handles there. I don't get Carry. it. Most people would. Who the fuck was carrying a console? No, no a lot of people would know. A lot of people lug these around because of how easy it was to plug up. I like get that it. was one of the other things too. It's like yeah. a little lunchbox. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it it didn't weigh that much. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I didn't really need a handle. Like consoles don't really need handles; they just need bags. But I so, I, I thought it was cool. Three colors ways. It came in this one at first, right? Yeah. And they brought a black one. Then they rolled out a silver one. Yeah, I got the black one and immediately regretted it because the purple one is so dope, but no one wanted to admit it that it was dope because it was purple. I never got to see the purple one out. Oh, it's beautiful. It was always the silver one that I always saw people have. Oh, that one's so oh, whack, silver. bro. I I do not like the silver GameCube because it's just like... It does not. I will say this, uh, not to have colorism or whatever they call it, but the gray Nintendo Cube controller, not a good look. That really threw it off. I was like, purple, it works. I wasn't a fan of that one. The either. basic silver Nintendo GameCube remote? I just that don't like everybody GameCube had. Silver. GameCube what? silver looked like just, it had no paint. Like it looked like the original stock. <laughs> the was it cheaper? <laughs> was it cheaper than the other uh, GameCubes or were they all the same? I they probably I were all the same. The, so the, the Xbox didn't come in any limited edition colorways? It did, nah, it did. I'm, I'm pulling them all, I'm pulling them all up right now. First of all, oh, I gotta see it. Okay. I gotta see it. First of all, here's, just... here's all the GameCube colors. Oh, by the way. shit. Never Who's saw that? the mint green. I did, I did see, see the one. What's the, is that gold? I did see the gold I've one. I've seen the gold one. Yeah. I've never seen I've never orange seen, either. I've never seen orange. Let me do them in a little bit so you guys can see I've seen the black one. Yeah, I've never seen orange, purple, and the mint. I've never seen those. The mint is clean. And yeah, I think I, I'm trying to remember who the special edition that was. That's a special edition, right. obviously. Dude, that's I'm fucking plain. Like that's like BMO. Yeah, I forgot what Yo, who that who special is edition was. That? I'm trying to remember because I I know that face. I just can't remember who it is. I like it. Yeah. Um, just for the sake of since it's already up there, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Xbox One. Surprise, Mr. PlayStation. Uh -huh. Xbox One. I was gonna do Game Boy Color, but uh, I think that Xbox One. Uh, it, it as big as it is, that was its biggest problem. You know what I mean? Its size and, and how bulky it was, was why I was kind of turned off to it. But the, the lineup, like I was playing <coughs> Xbox pretty heavy and you can't deny how Halo hit the, hit the scene. Like Halo was so fun at first. That's, that's pretty dope. I don't like the controllers, but the- That's one of the, the limited edition consoles? Oh yeah, the, uh, the green one. Green, transparent, green. transparent green. There's a lot of those out there. They're very hard like to get, obviously. Did, could you find the clear one where you can see inside the Xbox and it lights yeah, up? Try to find that one too. Go and keep talking, Pat. Is it lighter though? <coughs> so like it's it like it's it's a a glass case. Like it's not glass that, but it's like all see through. But when it you cut it on, it lights up green. But I mean, you can't you can't deny the the hits that Xbox had like. I, I just remember playing Crazy Taxi, <coughs> you know, Simpsons Hit and Run. Mm. Uh, Y'all remember Marvel Nemesis? Marvel had a whole game that was lit. It was basically the Avengers and they had evil versions of themselves called the Nemesis. Mm -hmm. So all of them had like these uh, alternate characters and it was an, it was a really dope 3D fighting game. You could interact with the, the environment. Uh, one of my favorite Marvel games actually, oh, that's, mm. Eh, that's like the it looks like the old Kobe shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crystal, <laughs> crystal. But it lights up. But it lights up green. Crystal edition. Yeah. Crystal edition. Crystal edition. So Microsoft was never good in the design department, They're honestly. Right. Um, but Nintendo already had them. But it was a beast. It was qu it was fast. It was obviously a really powerful uh, console. And the game lineup was so dope. I just sort of split off afterwards because it just like. Once it showed like lack of originality, I had to split away. But when it first hit, like I was actually an Xbox fan. Uh, it's kind of like how Will hates Sekiro. Like I actually really loved Xbox at one point. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you on that, Pat. Like my Ninja Gaiden Black time. When I played Ninja Gaiden Black on the on the that's Xbox, on Xbox, right? That's the that was on the original Xbox. That was the yeah, only I way you that, can, yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. The only way you can play that was on the original Xbox, and I played the hell out of that game. I love that beautiful. game. 
Yeah. I remember the first level that came out of the menu. You were just looking at that beautiful background and then yep. you press start and then it went into it and you were just like, woo! Exactly. The, the music starts playing. What <laughs> Bro, that game is hard. Like, it's a very hard felt game. They also had a blue one, by the way. What you think about this blue? Oh, shit. I like that one. I'm looking at a picture of Kadeem and it has a, a polar oh, like ice white one. Yeah, I think I pulled There's that one up Halo. Already. There's a Halo 2 joint that's yep. trans. It's the same transparent green that we saw, just a little bit darker, more military green. Yeah. There's a black transparent one. And there's a and Mountain Dew edition. Yep. A Mountain Dew edition Xbox. There's supposed to be an Army edition one too that's in like Army fatigue. I, I want that up. one. I can't flex. I want that. That yeah. shit dope, bro. It that shit up. is huge and green. It's bold. I like it. No. No. Nope. <laughs> you say no, Pat. Oh. Um. No. Will, what is your underrated console? Man, listen, I'm I'm going hella deep. Y'all are not ready for this. Believe me, man. <coughs> Excuse me. Y'all, first of all, I don't think any one of us have played this. Okay. I'm probably the only one out of us to ever touch one. All right. And see it cut on. And that is the Apple Pippin. Okay. Yes. Pippin? Yes. It is the game that never happened. <laughs> and it was so it was Apple's gonna be first Apple's first video game. So crazy. They man, Bandai manufactured this video game. Yep. Apple Bandai. I'm about to pull up a picture of it right now. Yeah, it's called the Pippin, like Scotty Pippin. Yes. Except it, it was like Pip and then Pin. So it's Pip Pin. P-I-P is one word and then P-I-N is a separate word. It was it came out in like 96. Yeah, they only made like a hundred thousand copies. And um, I think they only sold like 42,000 of them. Before. Hey, that's the shit that be in uh the hotels when you travel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Facts. but listen, the thing the games like they had in <laughs> development to come out, like they were developing like a Dragon Ball Z game that came out in like Japan. They developed a Power Rangers Zio versus the Machine Empire game that I think only came out like North America. Oh. Um, and then they had like a, a Gundam game was on there. There were like a whole bunch of them that like came out and stuff. And it was like, this was like dope because it was kind of like the next wave of like dope games mixed with like PC. So it was going to be able to kind of like somewhat rival like with PlayStation and everything, but just the design and look, it just kind of fell to the wayside. Cause it right it, like if you look at it now, it looks like an answering machine with the controller. What what year was this? This was 96. Wow. Yeah, 1996. Yeah. So this was competing with the best of the best. And this this was was a company that was called the company was Pippin, or that was just the console. No, that was the name of the console. App. This is Apple's video game. This was now. Apple's. Okay. Yeah. And Bandai was manufacturing this console. Wow. Okay. So they had them free Power Ranger rights, and they thought that they could make something happen. Oh, but they have so many of these games like that. I'm about, to pull, I'm about to pull up a Dragon Ball Z little uh, picture of, of one of the gameplays, and I'm I'm actually intrigued on how this was going to play. So what's what's some of the underrated games on this the, console then? The Dragon Ball Z game, the Power Rangers Zio game. Let me actually make it bigger so you guys can see this one, because I actually want y'all to take a look at that. That that looks actually not too bad. I wonder yeah. where it was going to go. It looks like it might be like you make Those your own fights. Fight. Yeah. It, might, it looks like you might make your own fights and stuff like that, which is actually not that, not that bad of an idea. Let me close this make out. Make your own fights? Yeah, let me show you. Let me pull it off. They didn't make the deadline, so they're like, what if we just made them do it? Right? <laughs> no, it's just the, the, the <laughs> for one, it was, it, was, it was high overpriced. So like, nobody, I think it was like $1,000. They were charging just like a, a, a laptop. So it was just like, one, no one was going to pay that amount of money wow. in 1996. Hey, do y'all know how much like the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 drop like were when they dropped? They were like 300. I think, yeah, it was like two to 300 for sure. Yeah, yeah, like the PlayStation 3, I think, is like the highest one they ever like. Yeah, made. it was like $600. Yeah, and we oh, were like, you I remember stuff. that. I was like, what? Yeah, I remember seeing that's 549 on the screen. I was like, what the fuck is happening? That's like, that's like their worst console ever. And 64 original launch price, $200. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Far we've come. That's yeah. how much a game costs. <laughs> <laughs> I think a game cost was like $30, though, right? 
Back in the day, I think it was like 40. I think that's when I think we were still in the 40 range. Yeah. Damn. Wow. They've always hit right off of the 299. Do you guys, I know we're looking at this. Do you guys think they're going to shift going into the PS5? Because the original PlayStation, 300 The original PS2, $300. The PlayStation 3 shipped in both 499 options and a 599 option. PlayStation 4, they dropped us to 399 What do you think the PS5 is going to be at? Oh, I think it went up because of its power. And yeah. I think its power made it more expensive to make. So I'm I'm easily thinking they're gonna put seven, eight hundred dollars, maybe nah. nine. Here, here's what nah. I'm thinking. I think nah, nah. Well, they're finna do they're finna do it like iPhones. They're gonna give you three different versions for you to buy. So you can get your basic one for three ninety nine, that may be like five hundred gigs. Then you have like the terabyte, which has a different kind of, kind of processing, because that's what Xbox is doing. Xbox is coming out with um the line Lionheart. Uh, who's a big Harry Potter fan out of the four of us? What's think, what's the dude that lost his memory in the in the second one when they were in the Chamber of Secrets? They uh he, the writer? he was, yeah he was stealing all the stories and stuff. Yeah, whatever his name is, that's the the second version of the Xbox Series X. Okay. They're supposed to be revealing that like this week or next week or something yep. like that. I think it's like the Lockhart or something like that. I think so too. Mm. Yeah, but they're coming out with like different versions for you to purchase. I can see them doing that. It's yeah. hard, bro. It's hard to launch a console. We've seen it already. We've seen people, we've seen companies be actually put it out there on the market and not be able to compete with the heavy hitters. But, yeah. but let's be real. Microsoft came out of the blue and threw their name into the ring. With their the features. Actual, they their did. Their features, though. Their features, though. That's what got them. Yeah. And they already were doing computer gaming. So they were already kind of in the field already like apple like was just apple wasn't there yet like apple was still like you had just gave us imax which is stuff for school and everything like that and then you came out with the ipod it's like the ipod people putting out a video game like what right. like if you came out now probably would have been fired but since you got mobile and ipads there ain't no reason for you and you just released arcade so you're kind of good so that's right. what i think this molded into yeah Actually, it molded into Apple TV uh, is what they branded this from. Because that's what now they got Apple Arcade. You can play a little bunch of mini games. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Those were our most underrated video games and our most underrated video game consoles. Yeah. We did pretty good, guys. I'm not going to lie. That was a great conversation about, you know, really our generation of video games and the consoles. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think Pat owns a bunch of his old school ones. Will owns I a bunch of I just found my Dreamcast. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> Yes. My brother Kadeem, of course, is is the game master of Jordan himself. He has all of that sitting in a nice collection. Do. What do you think we get to do what we do here at Arcade? So it's always a lot of fun. Uh, we're gonna move on to our level two. Level two. Level two, ladies and gentlemen. Play, yeah. download, delete, or obliterate. I don't like this episode. I think everybody su submitted some pretty heinous, heinous things. No, I didn't commit anything heinous. I was set up because uh, Pat did not give us pre-warning. He was just like, what's your favorite game? Just go off of it. Go. And we said him and we was like, cool, play, download, delete. What? What? Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's gotta be something that's so deep in there that you don't want to lose it. So yeah. that, was, that, that was a classic setup and I applaud you. <laughs> I I, I, so, I applaud you guys for your submissions. And I know that the viewers are gonna be upset because the options for today, unfortunately, are Crash Bandicoot, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and help me out on the third one. The third one is Grand Theft Auto. Which one? Man, I'm gonna just go San Andreas. You sick. So we already in the like because delete deletes everything for those that don't know when you hit delete you're deleting the entire franchise that's Thanos everything snap. Thanos snap um honestly I don't really even know how to break this down because None. like Call of Duty changed first person shooters we wouldn't have anything I mean Halo came out at the same time I don't know how much they borrowed from each other but Halo would have us in a decent place, honestly. But Call of Duty just, you know, everything is Call of Duty. So, right. 
Yeah, it's Call of Duty is the Lil Wayne of first person shooters. So, <laughs> but Crash, I feel like Crash is the face of PlayStation. Like, without this to roll out, like, would PlayStation be what it is today without this person? Well, I mean, this character. But then we have Grand Theft Auto. I personally think we could have went without Crash. I'm not a big fan of the franchise. I don't get really? why people. I don't get why people love it so much. To be honest, you don't I like don't, Crash Two. I don't like the Crash Bandicoot games. He's they don't not, connect. He's with not me. a Something platformer, about, Pat. I keep trying to explain this style, to you. It just don't connect with no, me. No, like, you like Mega Man. Man, right, I don't, that's what I don't understand. Like, how do you like Mega Man, but, but Mega, not Crash? You shoot in Mega Man. You shoot in Mega Man. It's side-scrolling, Crash Bandicoot 3D platformers. He did. He didn't like, like Mario 64. Like, you guys have to remember where he yeah, stopped so, at. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah. Crash didn't like connect with me like that. But do you guys honestly think PlayStation couldn't still boom without Crash Bandicoot? I mean, do you think Nintendo, that goes back to me saying, does Nintendo could boom without Mario? That's yeah. a whole different story, though. No. That's a whole different place. Play, Mario PlayStation could have you could have gone without any of these. It's that's how strong PlayStation is. They they're strong in the shooting. They're strong over here. They're strong over here. They're strong over here. Not a lot of not a lot of companies are like that. So, yeah. but take it, yourself back, starting out like when they first came out, and you're competing yeah. against Nintendo. Sega's kind of on its way out and stuff like that. That's like, what was PlayStation's biggest thing they were pushing? Crash. Crash is what brought the kids in. Because remember, we didn't move into big, like the only maturest game we could play was Mortal Kombat. And again, they had to get all of that to come over there. So at that time, you didn't have all those licensed scenes at first like that. And look at the games we had, like Scython Filter didn't really make it. Um, Odd World didn't really make it. Like a lot of these were like dope, but they were one-offs. Like they didn't build franchises off of these until we got to like PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3. So like site like like Spyro, Jack and Daxter, that didn't come without Crash. But no, uh, uh, in theory, in theory, those I'm say for the snap, for the snap, those could have came. In my opinion, those Jack and Daxters, the Ratchet and Clanks, those could have came without with, Crash. It could have happened. I don't know. You might not even know. get down to you might not even get down to like Uncharted Last of Us without oh, the same company. That's just, I get that. I get that. Yeah. And then Grand Theft Auto, that's just I'ma put it just you wouldn't have online without us. Like that's just like I don't think online would be the way it is outside of Call of Duty. Like Call of Duty, you gotta kinda be like that person. But like in Grand Theft Auto, you could be whatever you want to be. Like people, I don't know, because the Sims and and games like that were doing a lot of things that Grand Theft Auto did. Grand Theft Auto was obviously very innovative and they took over the whole crime thing, the the police thing, you know, uh, carjacking and, and inner city like, you know, crimes and missions. That part was amazing. But I feel like we still had like the midnight clubs, the true cl crimes, you know, like somebody would have eventually come around to doing a, a, I don't think it would have been as good. Rockstar I, like has it on lock, but yeah. I'm We've just saying it. like I don't know. I don't know a lot of other games that I I like that was inspired by GTA. Uh, but but you see like how they don't measure up. Like Sim, like Sims is the original. Like Sims is the OG. But then Grand Theft Auto, which didn't even start off as like what we know today, it was a it was a top person view chaser because. It was created in London. They like London don't have a lot of crime like that. So it's just like at that time when it was made. So that's why it didn't really appeal to them, which is why they sold it to Rockstar and they changed it in three. But three was the first time to have like a open world. Like you couldn't, there was no other game where you can like, I'm gonna go hang out in an alleyway in New York like city and go do drugs and shoot a prostitute. There's no other game that was letting you do that. Grand Theft Auto opened up true crime. It opened up Saints Row. It opened up all of these things for like open world viewing games, which kind of honestly leads to, in a sense, Batman, Spider-Man, all of them for open world like games to go explore outside this, of like RPGs. This is true. But it's just hard, brother, because like these are three flagship games we're talking about here. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto has gone on to be probably one, if not one of the biggest online games that you could be a part of. 
you can build your own community. Like there's pe- there's people who got whole crews on it. They live like they live a made up lifestyle in this game. You can vouch for it. You've one of the people who got a whole bunker because you play Grand Theft Auto Online. Great, but that's where we are right now. With right. Call of Duty, what Modern Warfare has been able to do, the fact that it's come back out and they wanted to go head to head with Fortnite and they released this Warzone. And guess what? Warzone is free. I didn't even put those two together. I thought I had to have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the actual game that allows me to play Team Deathmatch and Gun Game and all those other uh, different battle systems. No, I don't have to have that to even play Call of Duty Warzone. Warzone is a separate game? Yeah. Warzone is its own individual separate game that is free. I I didn't know that. Just like Fortnite. I thought it was that was two hundred players, right? Now they yeah they just dropped a new update that allows you to play with up to two hundred players, so that's great. Call it, I mean, excuse me, with uh, Crash Bandicoot, of course we we have one, two, three. We've had Crash Team Racing, which was I believe had a re release uh, last year, I believe in twenty nineteen. We yeah. had that. And Crash now, Team Racing was dope, but I could do without it. <laughs> Mario Kart is, I'll go Mario Kart all day. And and then Mario Diddy Kart, what's the point? A lot of people sleep on Diddy Kong Racing. I like Diddy Kong Racing. I, I do did too. for that. Yeah, um, it's a sub game. Shots are rare again. We now have, of course, it's been announced. We have Crash Bandicoot 4 on the way out. People are excited. People are happy. What about, what do you guys think about Crash, I mean, Crash coming back for Fortnite? Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm good. Like, I, I like what the remake, oh, I like what they've now turned it into, the rebranding. I like his silliness a little bit more. Like, I can see this. The old, here's all they got to like. Don't like it's on Xbox. Xbox fan, but don't like that it's coming out of Don't like that a PlayStation mascot only? A franchise. No, no, no. Not can't no, be. No, 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 Just they're coming up. Well, again, this is from what we saw. I don't even know if that. That's about to be so finished. sad. But uh, no, 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 no. That'd be dumb as hell if it just came out on Xbox. But Man. um, I just like, again, like the exclusiveness of it that was on PlayStation. It's like, all right. But I will play it no matter what, just because of oh, like Will, stuff he, I'm he's saying. going where the check is, man. That's what Sonic did. Not all these people are rich like Mario. So man, we see yeah. what what happened with Sonic. Crash, man. Crash wanted happened. that unexclusive money. So but here we yeah. are. We are. We are. Uh, we're we're deviating from the headache. Let's go ahead and get in. Who wants to go first? Play I'm gonna go first because I figured it out and it's painful, but I'm gonna just do it. Okay. I was tripping. Okay. Grand Theft Auto changed everything. Vehicles, cars, planes, helicopters, boats. That packs. How stuff is set up for open worlds for you to go and get missions and do missions. They set the format. So GTA is king at the end of the day. I'm going with play, Grand Theft Auto. <sighs> Download. I don't know where I would be in gaming without Call of Duty. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, I fell off to the point where I, I, I took it off my PlayStation to do more adventure games, but Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and around that, like probably five games on, I was literally in line at midnight. Like that was my, uh, that was, that was everything. So Call of Duty, I would never leave it. And then unfortunately, even though I brought it to the table, woo, that sucks. Wow. PlayStation without Crash Bandicoot washing up on that beach is really painful because I have very early memories with that game and Crash 2. But yeah, so, Crash, Crash gotta go. If I Ooh, you gotta say it. You gotta say it, Pat. Say you it. Say it. Say it. Delete you- Crash Bandicoot. Okay. Woo! Can I can I just interject here real quick? Can I just interject yes. real quick? The reason why this is happening though. They left Crash on the PS2. We have not seen Crash Bandicoot since the he missed out on the whole PS3 era and Xbox 360 era. They did not drop one Crash game in that whole time. And this is why this happens. This is why this is happening. See, Mario stayed consistent, and now Mario's any Mario game is off the shelf in this game. It's it's almost not even worth bringing a Mario game because it's just like okay, it's not going to be in delete. And that's how that's consistent work. <laughs> hey, so this is the reason why this is happening. This is the reason why I have problem with the sixty dollar Crash Crash Bandicoot four game. Like you didn't you didn't give us enough for me to just throw sixty dollars at it. But hey, don't you, rope this back into a Crash disc. This, <laughs> I thought we were y'all, y'all keep going. I didn't have I didn't have to put and, that and out. Here's there. and here's the thing too. We don't know what we're getting with Crash because four could open up a whole new world for Crash, and so that might lead into other things. But we we'll ain't gonna get into that. Cleo, would you do you want to go next? I will go next. It's very simple for me. I am playing Call of Duty. 
I am downloading Grand Theft Auto. And I got to get rid of Mr. Swirly Tasmanian Devil Crash Bandicoot. As great as he is, when it comes to being the, the symbol and being the actual mascot for a console, Mario held the test of time. Sonic is still beloved to this day. Crash, I can, I can look at PlayStation's lineup. I'm like, Crash, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Spyro, Sly Cooper. Crash, you're at the bottom of the list for me. Crash is like that cousin that lives out of state that you cool it's with. And when he come back, it's like, oh, what's good? But then he Crash, ain't. I ain't like, seen you in years. But you like Spyro more than Crash? I do. Just because Spyro can actually what? talk. No, just because Spyro can actually talk. Let me let me just get that out of the way. Crash has no voice. Spyro actually has some type of. Some, I don't nobody like, care about Spyro. That's what ruined it for me. That's what ruined it for me. When Spyro started talking, I was like, ew. I like Spyro like, talking, I though. Dragon. Like he, first of like all, I thought Spyro was a girl. I thought Spyro was a girl first and foremost. And then they started talking and I was like, I wasn't tripping that it was a boy, but then like how Spyro sounded, I was like, you know, you didn't sound mythical. You sounded like no, he you was in Urban Outfitters. Yeah, no, he was absolutely a cocky dragon. I, he was short, but he was cocky compared to all the other dragons. I get it. What happens when we don't respect our elders. All mm-hmm. right, Will. Go let's, ahead. Will, let's go. What's yours? Man, listen. Um, I got man. I'm not saying this for the. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go with it. Of course, play Grand Theft Auto, um, King of it. I am downloading Crash Bandicoot and deleting Call of Duty. I, I kudos I'm this. So I, sick I of this, this effing game. I, I feel like Call of Duty ruined video games. If you got rid of it, there's so much potential for other games to be played other than this BS. I'm so, like, I cannot tell you the traumatizing experience I have with these first person shooter games. Get all of them out of here. Tell them, tell them, Will. Tell them, tell them, Will. I'm so done. Every time when I stepped in here, I'm like, all right, let me try to figure out. Bow, you did. All right, man. Well, let me try. Bow, you did. No, like. You don't have to play online. You can appreciate first person shooters at your own pace and then jump online when you're ready. You're never going to be ready. You're never ready. Never ready. That's bull. I was ass cheeks at Call of Duty. Ass cheeks, Will. And I can give myself a little bit credit. I've learned the game a little bit more. I'm I'm pretty sure you come from the same era of video gaming and and shooters as me, where it's just you think you got to run and gun. That's not the smart way. You got to figure out the pace of each level. And you're talking about deleting Call of Duty. What do you think the gaming industry would be like if it wasn't for these Call of Duty tournaments? It this be, game alone has helped push esports to the top of everyone's list. It would be magical. Zelda would be sitting at the top where it belongs. We would hey, have super- Call of Duty ain't above Zelda. I'm sorry, When when's the last time you had a Zelda tournament? I'll wait. No, you, I mean, you can't. Right. You can have speed running, and you know anyway. why you can't because of Call of Duty. We oh. could have Super Smash Bro tournaments instead of these Call of Duty tournaments. We could have been having Mortal Kombat tournaments rather than Call of Duty. Those Call would have Duty. tournaments without Call of Duty, low key. So huh? those would still have tournaments. My, my, we would still my, have tournaments. My thing is, so do we go th- Halo? Would Halo take this place or no? I, I no, I would. Halo's I would still hope, ain't competitive like that, right? I would hope Call of Duty with it being obliterated would obliterate everything. <laughs> Halo, would be good. all of those first-person shooters. I think Battlefield would still happen because obviously war-based games isn't an original idea. That's just history. No. Battlefield, they would have. There would have been something. I, this is this is decent because there would have been something else that took this place, just maybe not as good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I, but again, I would, I it, then it would, huh? huh? The same goes for Crash. There could have been something to take his Bandicoot ass place. I just gave you an entire roster of other characters that PlayStation has put their flag on. Yeah, but those didn't work. Those didn't come out good. I, listen, I, I, I'm here with for Will. I'm, I'm right here with step by step with Will on this one. I am here with him because listen, I love I love third person shooters way more than I love first person shooters. Cyclone okay. Filter probably plays a lot more fun than these goddamn first person shooters. Fuck oh, Goldeneye. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and get that out of the way now. Goldeneye did not age well. All right. 
So let's go ahead and get that out the way now. Didn't age well. So no, not great when it was out. It, see what I'm saying? Like, bro, third person shooters are way better. Gears, way better play, gameplay. You can't tell me that Gears does not play better. Pat, you got a whole hour and a half of you saying you love Gears. I might have converted from Gears to Call of Duty. Nah, right. he was dope, but I don't, I'm not saying it was above my favorite shooter of all time. I'm just hey, saying gameplay-wise. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying character. I'm just saying I like the idea of being able to see everything. The first-person shooting shit gets me caught every time because I cannot every see time. when someone's near me. You feel me? Every time. like, like a sni- I am a sniper's wet dream. Every time. Every time. Hey. I'm just like... How do you see me? Like run I, around like in open territory, like where no, is everybody? Even, yep. even when I'm hiding, uh-huh. I've I've never in the history ever felt fat in a video game. Like I've never in my life until I played Call of Duty felt my size on a video game until then. I'm just like, am I is my character fat too? Can you not can he not hide right? Like Ooh. what's going on? Yep. I have too many, I have way push? too many good memories with the juggernauts and the waves and the survival mode to give up Call of Duty, but they'll let us know in the comments for sure. I'm for sure. sure. I'm sure. Yes, yes, indeed. So um, we're gonna go ahead and move to the boss level. I think it's gonna be an easy boss though, because um they're pretty clear cut and dry. I think like every like I from the two that you've given me, which is of course the most underrated, which franchise should come back? Which franchise needs that last hoorah to come back and receive its glory? I agree with the both of y'all that y'all have chosen today. Um I'm gonna go with mine very simple is uh Jet Moto. I think mm-hmm. Jet Moto will be dope to come back. I'm not looking for it to be like a number one smash seller but i think it has the potential to make something dope i've shown y'all before on here you've seen the gameplay you've seen how they've used like so many brands to customize the bikes like butterfinger mountain dew you could just imagine now with all the brands that's out which people would want to be on here you could also customize uh your engines customize how you want your uh jet moto to look the stages would be dope as hell on a ps5 so that's just my opinion. For I feel her. like that'd be dope on Switch for sure. And especially if they added like all those big arcade jumps, you know what I mean? And just like really Mario Karted it out. That would be lit. Yeah. I think that'd be dope. So that's that's my franchise I think should come back. Jet Moto 2, not a bad choice. I mean, look at look at just the cover of it. It was a great like, that's cover. It Here, it's no, there's no wheels on it. It's just boom, futuristic motorcycle. Come yep. get it. That's oh, pretty damn good. That's a good choice, Will. No flex. Appreciate it. Uh, for me, I got to go with one of my all-time favorite characters and one of my all-time favorite games, Mega Man X. I would love to have the resurgence of this franchise. X specifically. Mega Man plays different. Mega yeah. Man Legends played completely different. But yeah. X perfected that type of gameplay style to me. There have been many games that have been influenced by it. Uh, games like Mighty Number no. 9, which was a whole debauchery of... Of, of uh, kickback. Kickback. Of kickback. Uh yeah, kick kick back is it kickback? Yeah, what, what was the uh, company that uh, or that that what's that the thing did? where you can crowdsource funds? Kickstarter, 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 Kickstarter. Kickstarter. That okay. was a whole debauchery thing. It's wow. whatever that happened. Uh, but it was inspired by Mega Man X type of gameplay style. Uh, there's a game called Twenty XX, one of my favorite games of the newer generation. Thirty XX is on the way, so cannot I cannot wait. wait to play that game. That's gonna be so much fun. But to bring back Mega Man X in, you know, this modern era, maybe give it just some new elements to the to the pl- gameplay style. The powers that you would get every time you beat a boss, you knew you were going to end up facing Sigma at the end and some random ass battle, whether he turns into a mech suit or a huge dragon or he's a fucking ghost. Sorry for <laughs> cursing. It's just, it's ridiculous, but it was always fun. So I would love to see Mega Man X make a return, maybe make Zero a lot more cooler. He was already cool being the red version. He had a sword. He was dope. But for some odd reason, it just didn't it didn't work as well as playing with Mega I, Man X. I, I mean, why. spoiler alert, he blows up in the first game. This is true. Hey, man. I was like, okay. I mean, I, 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 all right. Well. I never beat this game. I actually just downloaded the Mega Man X Legacy. So yes. I'm, about to, I'm about to play through all of them. I'm really excited. Yes. I just watched a, a speed run to see just how good you could be at this game. And I just remember like how fun this game was and for me and my cousins and stuff like 
it was just the attempt. You know, yeah. these games were hard as hell. So it was just like, yeah. let's try the penguin level. And then we try and we might beat them. And then we'd be like, let's try the octopus. And then we'd lose and like, we'd just go to another yeah. level. Like, I, I do remember playing through it uh, once, maybe. I probably beat the boss. I'm not 100% sure. It's a long ass time ago, but it was just fun to play. I remember the dynamics being so much better than the original Mega Man, where he looks like you're just like jumping. Yeah, blocky <laughs> and all that. That terrible jump, the slide, the terrible. Right, it's right. back. It looks terrible. They so gave us a Mega Man 11 about a year and a half ago or two years ago. There was a Mega uh, Man 11, but it was not X. So yeah. it just didn't work. So you want, do you, would you want it to be in the same style if it came back? Because I'm just going to let you know, X7 and X8, did, or yeah, X7 and X8 came out. There were 3D games. It was a terrible idea. So that did happen. They, they, did, they tried to go that route. I don't think it, it needs to look just like how Mega Man X 1, 2, or 3 looked. Don't make it the exact same. Just, just make it look prettier. I don't know what that means. Just make the graphics look <laughs> like twenty X, little pretty. Twenty XX, like twenty XX, like twenty XX. Like yes, exactly. Yeah. That would be okay. great. That would be amazing, okay. man. And if that they don't do it, so be it. We got twenty XX and thirty XX. I can't wait to play that game. Right, right. I'm about to probably buy that one next. It's yeah. good. Twenty yeah. XX is where it's at. All right. Well, Pat, what is your franchise you want to see right. turn? I I I picked a game that I feel like didn't really get a chance out there in the PlayStation streets. I went ahead and picked Tomba, which is uh, a PlayStation. It's in the cut. Uh, this was a dude who I thought his character design was awesome. The storyline was cool. Yep. But the game, for some reason, it just didn't click with people. Uh, you were pretty much this wild man with long pink hair, which I thought was very uh, rem like reminiscent of Super Saiyan 3. Uh, yeah. He was just like this wild man who like uh, every there were pigs. There's basically seven evil pigs, uh, and they were they stole some some bracelet from him, and they were stockpiling a bunch of gold. So you're supposed to like go in and uh, fight each pig and his pig army, and it was very random storyline. But I feel like if they made this either 3D or just took the character and sort of remixed it in some type of way, or just perfected his uh, platforming. Uh, I think that people might bite the second time. I know there's a Tomba too, uh, and I played through like maybe half of each game, uh, but it was definitely interesting. The level design was always cool. I think the dynamic of him swing, swinging and climbing on things was really, really dope, uh, but it just got buried with other PlayStation titles. Yeah. Um, but I, I really appreciated the gameplay. So I feel like if it came back either remaster, I would definitely definitely play a remaster of tomba but if there was like a tomba 3 on playstation 5 i think that uh people would for sure fall in love with that character hey, this would be dope. yeah this would be dope to come out with because then you could get real like extra like ex extravagant with the like pig army and stuff like i picture him like with different levels like maybe like a sand like a sand level where they have like a digging like for gold kind of mind and stuff right. and, like, a big Pig head as the castle with fire coming out, and then here's Tomba trying to like destroy everything and uh say and get his stuff back. And like you said, even with the slide, like it could be like a new maneuver, like him sliding through like trees and like getting right. away from pigs. It, 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 it'd be dope. I, I could see that coming back if they made it for a PS5. Yeah, he had the agility for sure. Yeah. Tomba reminds me of uh Donnie from the Wild Thornberries cartoon. Like, yeah, I see that, but I've never seen gameplay, I don't think, of Tomba. Like, I've Pretty sure I've never seen any gameplay of this guy. I remember the pink hair. I remember yeah. the grass loincloth thing he's got on. Uh, Pat, he's sort of like Man Beast. So he sort of like ran, ran on all fours. Oh, wow. He would sort of like jump and grab, like grab onto things and like flip them. That's how he sort of attacked them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was almost like Blanca. He was kind of like Blanca. Tarzan, he he okay. sort of was like a like a Blanca Tarzan esque type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say this before before we get out of here. There is a uh, moment from games. I know we're on the whole speed running thing. There's a moment from games done quick. Uh, the live stream that is probably one of the funniest moments that ever happened. A guy's playing Tomba 2. We'll, we'll watch it. I'll just, I'll just let, let's don't forget about that, Pat. I want you to watch this this speed run moment that happened. That was absolutely hilarious. I'll so, write it down right now. Yes, Tomba right. 2 speed run funny. That's all you got to write down. Gotcha. So we will have to check that out. And like I said, y'all, this was an easy boss level. And with that, 
We have defeated the boss level, and this has been another episode of the RK Tokens podcast. We hope that y'all enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you check out RK Tokens YouTube, Twitch, social media handles. Make sure you check out our personal Twitch channels as well. We are always streaming throughout the week, so you can catch us in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. If you love the tokens that much, you can see us every day, seven days a week somewhere and also on all def gaming as well so we have been the arcade tokens i have been the anomaly will farrow nice cleo thomas aka mr slick living and i am uh, patrick uh, cloud <laughs> and we shall catch you next time <laughs>